The flight management system, FMS, on the Dash 8 is aimed at en-route lateral navigation. It can also be used for vertical navigation, for example to give a pseudo glide slope where there's no real glide slope. FMS is also certified for approach mode. We'll cover the Universal Technologies, UNS-1E, with 801 software. Check your manuals for the minor differences for higher and lower version numbers. And we'll only cover general principles of operation. You'll need hands-on practice to get really familiar. The FMS holds a 32 megabyte worldwide navigation database of waypoints, including SIDs, STARS, approaches, high-low airways, IFR intersections and approaches, and other nav aids. These are used in fixed company routes or pilot-defined routes. The FMS navigates between waypoints along great circle arcs, executes smooth, smart turns, and gives you an accurate position based on the Global Positioning System, GPS, and on scanning a large number of DME stations. However, you do need to understand it. A little knowledge can be a dangerous thing. But don't focus all your attention on the FMS and forget to fly the aircraft. If in doubt, disengage the FMS and navigate conventionally. The FMS has its own navigation computer unit, NCU, which takes inputs from GPS receivers, from the digital air data system, and from a scanning DME that scans stations within approximately 300 nautical miles. In single FMS installations, note that inputs are from system number one. It also needs heading and VOR input and fuel flow input. Outputs are mainly to the flight guidance system and to the EFIS system for display on the PFD. The most important output is the best computed position, BCP. BCP is calculated from many inputs. It's not important that you know the details of how the global positioning system operates, but here's the quick version. There are at least 24 satellites orbiting the Earth, transmitting to ground-based control stations that correct errors in the satellite position and in their atomic clocks. The GPS chooses a minimum of four satellites at a time to calculate the position and continually retunes to different satellites to get the best signals. This gives a highly accurate position fix, better than 0.1 nautical miles, about 20 meters laterally and 30 meters vertically, although errors are often less than 7 meters. BCP is also calculated by scanning all DMEs within a 300 nautical mile radius. The scanning is automatic and fast, giving an accuracy of better than 0.3 nautical miles. The navigation database of waypoints and the company routes database are loaded and updated by your navigation office every 28 days. FNS has a dual memory bank capable of holding both the current database and the database for the next cycle. It automatically switches to the next cycle after the expiry date of the current database. The navigation and company routes databases are protected, but you can create and temporarily store pilot routes. 
It's important to understand the difference between routes and a flight plan. A stored route from either the company route database or the pilot route database is loaded, that is copied, into main memory. This then becomes the active flight plan and the FMS navigates on this flight plan. You can save the flight plan as a route in the pilot database for later use. When you shut down the FMS, flight plans are automatically deleted. Pilot routes are remembered, but many companies have a policy of deleting them after each flight. So you're forced to build flight plans from the company database. We'll focus on the FMS control display units, CDUs, in detail in the next lesson. But now let's look at its interface to the other Q400 instruments. The multifunction nav displays, the primary flight displays, and the flight guidance control panel. With FMS selected as the navigation source on the flight guidance control panel, for the active side, and the flight plan active on the FMS, you activate LNAV mode by pressing the NAV button. Touch the NAV button. On the multifunction display in map mode, you see the FMS lateral path to the next waypoint. Together with its bearing, distance, time to go, and ground speed. Magenta means that the FMS is controlling this, or supplying data. On the primary flight display, LNAV becomes the engaged lateral mode. It does not have an armed or capture phase. In LNAV, the FMS continuously transmits roll steering commands to the auto flight control system. On the EHSI, are the course pointer, showing the desired track, the deviation bar, and the to-from pointer, controlled by the FMS. The FMS can also be used for vertical navigation. VNAV does have armed and captured phases. In VNAV mode, the FMS sets vertical waypoints and shows a vertical deviation scale and pointer. In VNAV flight level change submode, the FMS computes the current speed and a desired active speed target to guide you to reach the new flight level. Alerts advise you of progress along a lateral or vertical path. Waypoint alert comes on 30 seconds before reaching a lateral waypoint. Vertical alert comes on 60 seconds before a change to climb or descend, or 1,000 feet before a level off. Here you get lateral scale sensitivity messages. And here, general messages. For example, cross track indicates that you've selected a cross track course. On the EFIS control panels, you can also set the bearing pointers to FMS 1 and 2. If you're unsure of what the FMS is doing, or if you run into time problems, just select another lateral mode to disengage the FMS. You can also disengage by pressing NAV again, or standby, by switching the active side or changing the nav source. The FMS continues navigating on its own, but you're in control of the aircraft using heading select mode. You can use the FMS as an advisor. When you re-engage the FMS by pressing nav, it will continue on the planned route
from the present position. In this situation, we have to check for cross track. We'll cover this in a later lesson. For example, prior to approach, on the FMS you can set a holding pattern for a missed approach. Then fly on autopilot and manually down to minimums. Then if you need to select go around, engage the FMS and proceed direct to the holding. With two FMSs installed, you need to copy the initialization, flight plan and fuel data using the crossfill function. One FMS is regarded as the master for sending. Which one will probably depend on company procedures. You initialize it, press the accept line key and set up loading and flight plan data. But on the receiving FMS, you simply turn it on only. Do not go through the initialization process or press the accept line key. To initiate a complete crossfill, you press this line key on the receiving FMS. Touch the crossfill from master line key on the receiving FMS. No. After the prompt that tests for finger trouble, you see the sending and receiving messages. When complete, you carry on as normal from the init page. Finally, here's an example of a flight plan. This is page one of one. Notice that we've currently passed waypoint one and are continuing on to waypoint two. Now touch the nav function key to see a nav page. The nav page gives you a great deal of navigation information. For example, the from and to waypoints, the next waypoint, and details such as ground speed, headwind, and bearing. You'll use the nav page quite often en route 